My special guest today is going to share three marketing tips you are probably overlooking. Trust me, you do not want to miss this. Hi, I am Tim Fitzpatrick with Rialto Marketing. Um, thank you so much for tuning in, taking the time. I'm really excited to have with me Richard Matthews from Push Button Podcast and host of The Hero Show. So Richard, welcome and thanks for taking the time. Awesome, thanks for having me here. It's uh, good to uh, come back and come on your show. I know you came on The Hero Show a couple of weeks ago. Yes. Um, so it, you know, it's always fun to uh, to trade and come back and see uh, see what say hi to your audience. Yes, absolutely. I had a ton of fun. So I'm um, thank you for for returning the favor and coming on. I know we're going to dig into some really good stuff. Um, and I know you're so you're in Sarasota now. You're living a bit of a nomadic life at this point, right? Yeah, yeah. For for your audience, they want to they want to see the uh, behind the curtains. I'm in the back bedroom of an RV here with a, a fake <laughs> studio set up. That's my uh, my my master bed here in the in the back bedroom of the RV. The bat you know bathrooms off that direction, closets that direction. So we're you know it. It looks cool here, but you know, that's all, that's all fake. We, we yeah, traveled well, full time. We've been traveling for three and a half years. I got four kids up there, a dog. And right now my wife is rescuing a baby raccoon, which is in our shower bouncing up and down. <laughs> <laughs> Never a dull moment, right? Not at all. Oh, see, that's so cool. So see, so th that also lets people know you can film anywhere. It doesn't matter if you, if you wouldn't have told people any of this, they would have had no idea where the heck you were. They would have just said, man, he's got a cool patriotic background. <laughs> so that is awesome. Um, before we get into it, just tell us a little bit more about what you're doing and you know how you're helping businesses. You know, you've got some really cool stuff that you're doing, so I'd love for you to share that. Yeah, yeah. My my primary uh, service offering right now is uh, Push Button Podcasts, which you mentioned already. And Push Button Podcasts is a full-service podcasting content creation agency. So what we do is we actually help um, businesses, everything from e-commerce businesses to coaching businesses to, um, you know, to, to lots of different, um, to, uh, you know, what do you call them? You know, genres of business, I guess, that we, we have working um, with us. And the whole goal of Push Button Podcasts is to um, create a content machine for your business that doesn't take a lot of your time and effort. Um, so you can just come in, uh, you know, once a week, or, you know, a lot of my clients, we actually batch it. So they do once a month, they produce like four or five episodes for the month. Um, and they do a live video uh, or, or a pre-recorded video if we're doing them batched um, once a week. And then we do everything else for them. Um, so everything from creating the graphic assets, creating the written assets, all the video and audio editing, um, all the publishing and promotion, all of the advertising, if they want to do advertising, if they're doing guest interviews, we even have add-ons for where we'll go in and, uh, and we'll research and find all of your guests for your interviews. So you literally have to do nothing but show up at the recorded recording time, record, hit that stop record button. That's where the push button comes from, right? You just push stop button and everything else happens for your business. Um, and today, especially, you know, you know, this post pandemic world that we're living in, content marketing is so key. Um, and so many businesses don't have either the time or the staff that it's required to to put out the volume of content that you need, which is where push button yes. podcasts can come in and really help you. You know, you can take an hour a week and get make sure that you have good content showing up everywhere that's relevant to your potential audience. Yeah, I love it. Uh, content. I couldn't agree with more more what you said. Content right now is so so important, especially for people like you and I, you know, we're consultants, you know, people that are selling their expertise, putting out content is so, so important. Um, yeah, yeah, and I'm working with an e-com business right now and it's the same thing, right? You know, yeah. they do candles and fuels and we're looking at how do we create weekly video shows that are showing off the, the actual e-com stuff so it's because it yeah. drives sales. And con so content's important in lots of different industries and, you know, the, the consumers are getting smarter and smarter and smarter, which is not a problem. It's just a matter of like, we have to change our marketing to keep up with the way that people are wanting to to buy. They want to yeah. buy from companies they know, they like, that they have that connection with. And that's going to come from that good content, whether it's a video or a podcast or blog content, whatever it is, people are going to want to talk and read and hear about your company and the products that you have. If you yeah. don't have that content, you're going to be beat out by your competition that does. Yeah. Totally agree. How, um, with what you're doing with, um, with clients, how long are you seeing or how, 
when you prep them for how long it's going to take to start to see a return on content, what do you tell them? Then, but this is we're, so, we haven't even gotten into the questions. But this is I, so I, think I always this is tell one. I always tell my clients that uh, that the content game is a long it's a long game, right? It's not it's not direct response marketing. It's not like we're going to put an ad on Facebook and you're going to get clicks to your website tomorrow and sales the next day, right? That, you know, which is the way that advertising is. And I always recommend if you don't have that kind of advertising going, you should have it. You should have short term marketing stuff going. Yes. But content marketing is a long term play. Right. And it's the type of thing where you're building a snowball that's going to build up over time. And once it hits that critical mass, there's no stopping you. Right. Yeah. Where you have hundreds of thousands of people who are listening to you or tens of thousands, depending on your market, um, or even thousands. If you're in, I got a couple of people in the, uh, the manufacturing space where they're like, hey, if we got 100 people who are listening to us. They're making millions of dollars a year. Right. Yeah. Because they're the, uh, the expert. So depending on your space, you want to be the go to expert. And well done content is you. I call it the three A's. It's um, awareness and attention and authority yeah. right so awareness attention and authority are the three things that you want you want people to uh, be aware that you exist you want your content to be good enough that it grabs their attention and then you want to provide enough value on there that they look at you as an authority in their space yeah. um, and so with all that being said the time frame that you're looking at is you want to commit to your content stuff for at least a year bare minimum if not 16 to 18 months yeah uh, and you'll start uh, you'll see stuff happen in the beginning in the first six, seven, eight months. Like I got a client right now, they're six months into their podcast and they're getting sales out the wazoo for their uh, e-com training stuff, which is fine. Um, but, you know, they were already a well-known name in their space. Yeah. Uh, and adding a huge content marketing thing, just it, they had a whole bunch of hungry audience that wanted to see more of their content. Now that they're putting out there, they're, they're getting a lot more traction because of that. Um, so if you're starting out brand new and no one knows you, it might take a little bit longer. Um, so anyways, I always coach my my clients, you want to you want to commit to content for the long term. Yep. Cool. Thank you for sharing that. Um, there you have it, people. I'm not the only one that says that. Richard agrees with me. Um, so there we, we've got a quorum here and we're in good shape. Um, yeah, but it, content, I that's once that snowball starts going downhill, you're unstoppable. So Absolutely. That's awesome. So let's actually let's actually dig into what we're really going to talk about today, which are these these tips that I think a lot of people are overlooking. You know, a lot of people overcomplicate marketing. I don't think it has to be that way. Um, so this first question I love because pricing, I think, is something that a lot of businesses struggle with. I've struggled with it. You know, how do you price? The value that you offer and, and, and why is this key to your success as you start up? So I have something I call the 310 rule. Um, and the 310 rule, and I just made that up on the spot because I needed a name for it. <laughs> but the, uh, um, uh, it, but it, it follows, follows a, a thing that I do all the time. And it is a, um, it's, it's more easy to accomplish if the thing that you are offering has a direct um, ROI component, it's a little bit more difficult if the service or something that you're offering doesn't have a, a financial ROI, right? So if you're in like the relationship space and you're helping someone, you know, find the perfect uh, love, it's far more difficult to figure out what your pricing is. But if you're in like the marketing space or if you're in the e-com space yeah. um, and your product has, um, has, you know, easy to measure ROI in someone's life, either in time saved or money saved or, you know, money generated, um, then I follow this 310 rule, which is I want I want for the most part, I want whatever the price is, right? Say it's a, you know, a hundred yeah. bucks. I want someone to get three times that value in return, either in monetary dollars saved or money generated or time saved, right? And that's going to depend on the market. If it's time, like what is the time worth in that market? Those kind of things. Um, yeah. So I want someone to get bare minimum three times the ROI um, back from whatever the, uh, the cost is of the product. Okay. And so that's the three and the 10, is then I want I want I want there to be a stretch goal with either the service or the product where the potential for having 10x return is there, right? Got it. Uh, and and so like one of the things that uh, you know for you just use push button podcasts as an example, um, we have uh, I have a client as a number of years ago now uh, that we started this was before we had push button podcasts or before like a lot of this the stuff was getting really big we started he had a youtube channel and we were doing a, he was doing a weekly show and i was helping him do all these promotions and whatnot um and had some services together where we sat down um and because he had the audience already because he had these things um 
he wanted to sell a course to his audience and they were asking for him to develop this course. So we, we sat down and developed it in the course of, you know, uh, I think it was eight hours. We sat down and we like outlined the whole thing, they recorded the whole thing. And then we released it all the next day um, to his audience um, that, you know, that came. Uh, and because it was there already, right, he was able to uh, produce $24,000 in sales in about 48 hours. Right. Okay. Um, so that's a, a large amount of sales. And over the next year, we did $250,000 of sales of that product to his audience, right? So when it comes to the push button podcast, um, we charge, uh, I think our, our price is right around $2,000 a month that we charge for that. Okay. Um, and, you know, he had built his audience up to a certain point, And we know that you can build an audience to that point using our service um, that if you could go around and bring in a $250,000 worth of sales, um, you know, on a yearly basis from what we're doing with you, that's that 10x return easily. Yeah. Right. Uh, if not more. And that's just one product. We actually had several. We had he had uh, um, some events that we sold to his audience and he had some another training course we sold to his audience. So it ended up being more like half a million or more. But like I want to see that potential for, you know, a bare minimum 3x return on your investment and see the potential for 10x return. And um, I know that if it's going to be hard to hit that 3x return, my price is too high. Right. Got it. Um, and and uh, so, you know, uh, play with it right and so like we actually struggled that a little bit with pricing the push button podcast service i had it up a little bit higher and realized i need to bring it down a little bit because it was easier for people to stomach that and actually see that potential they're like yeah if i get my audience to this point and we're actually you know promoting some of these you know these products we can see where the roi comes in yeah uh, and learn how to do that so that's how we that's how we price our services and i've been doing that for years now um all the way up to i can actually tell you where where one of my uh, mistakes that i made in this 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 uh this spot i had a a client um, before I actually learned how to do this pricing stuff, I, I, I was in this old mindset where, um, I charged people an hourly rate and, uh, because I thought that's what I was worth was an hourly rate. Um, and I was thinking like an employee, I was like, you know, a, a good, good employee. I was like maybe $15 an hour. And, you know, I was helping him write a webinar and do these online sales. And I had already been doing hundreds of webinars at this point, but was really, really good at it. Yeah. Um, and one of these big guys, Kenny was like, Hey, can you help me with, uh, with, this webinar that we're doing, I got this huge audience of people and we want to get this stuff together, we put it together. And I was like, yeah, it's gonna take me four or five hours. We'll do this, I'll help you live on the thing, blah, blah. I charged, long story short, I charged him $500 to write his webinar, help him with his offer and then manage the whole webinar live and then do it twice for him. We did $250,000 in sales over two webinars. Um, yeah, and, I charged and you him made 500 bucks. And I made five hundred dollars, and yeah. I was like, "Oh, so I need to, I need to, do, you know, I was, I was significantly off on that three x, ten x return." Yeah. Right. Um. And you know, I got him like a hundred or two hundred x return on what he, uh, <laughs> what he paid me. Um. Which that's the value is is, is skewed, right? Um, yes. In his favor, and that makes it so it's not an equal chain exchange of value. Yeah. Um, and that's where 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 uh, capitalism thrives when there's an equal exchange of value yes where you know where both people feel like they got a great deal um and you know in that case he got a great deal and he was happy but i didn't feel like i got a great deal right so i don't want to do yeah. that again right so that's where where you want to have both people in the transaction come out of that transaction saying hey you know what this was a great thing for both of us um and that's where you want to have that and so for me um i feel best when because of the services i'm offering they have that sort of an roi um Yep. And so you, that's, that's you priced, at a, at a minimum, you're going to be at that three times what you think, to, three times a, a price you get 3x return. So Adam, you're pricing that at a minimum. Sometimes do you charge more than that? Not generally. Okay. Not generally. So, so usually I try to keep, right I try that, to keep that, at that at that 3x where like that's minimum. If you make more than that, then you're just a happy camper. Yeah, got it. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. Um, well, and that that way you're ensuring that yeah. you're you're over delivering, right? You're under promising and over delivering in most cases. Yeah, and it goes and it goes into a lot of things, right? So so with the push button podcasting, one of the things because we're actually we're replacing staff on your on your your side. Um, there's actually if you hire us versus hiring someone in house, you have to think about you know bringing someone in house. You have to pay employment taxes and benefits and yeah. other things that you don't have to pay us. So we take all of that into account, um, right? Yeah. So to get the same number of people on your staff doing it internally would cost you two, three times more than what we're doing. So even just with the cost savings of doing it outside of your internal staff, we're hitting yeah. that three x return. Um, 
so anything you you actually make um, from your audience that we help you build with push button podcasts gets into that four to ten x return for you. Yeah, got it. Okay, I love it. So three ten rule. You just made it up. I made a title anyways. I've been yes. following the rule for years. <laughs> yes. So you price uh, price should be, should get a minimum three x return, and there's a stretch there that they can potentially get 10 X return on their, what they're investing. Um, yeah. Yeah. And just make sure when you're thinking of ROI, make sure you're thinking about all the different aspects of ROI. Cause it's not always yes. just monetary, right? right? Sometimes it's, you know, the headache of staff and not having to build processes and not having to learn the stuff in there. Right. There's, there's a lot of things that go into what the ROI is. Yes. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to force you to think about, what are the actual value items for your sales, right? For your sales staff who's selling it or for your sales copy on your website? Because you, those ROI pieces are what's going to sell your service or sell your product. Yep. Love it. So let's move it. Let's move into the uh, the dreaded about page on, uh, <laughs> on our websites, right? Uh, man, most of these are so boring. Um, so why is your about page so, so important? on your website and what are we missing out on if we're not fully utilizing it? So this actually comes from um, my my other brand um, that I did for a number of years. And actually some of those stories came from that where I helped people build what I call a heroic brand, right? Yeah. Um, and that's where the hero show sort of got its start and all of the stuff over on my uh, um, my, my brand where I help people build build their website, build their, their brand, build their products and services, build their whole like, build everything they were doing um, and eventually get into, you know, building in a content to sell it all, which is where push button podcast falls in. But the about page was one of the things that we struggled with for a long time, because um, the about page is actually um, for pretty much across the board, any industry, whatever site you're doing, or whatever you sell on your about page, the second most visited page on your website, right after your homepage. Yeah. Right. Um, and to the tune of 80% of your visitors, um, even if you put them to a landing page, and we'll, we're seeing this now where we've got advertisers who are like, we'll, we'll advertise a business um, or advertisers are advertising a very particular landing page. So there's like no header and footer. It's just a landing page with an offer on it and all these things, right? You know, here's the thing that you're going to get, right? And you click the button, it's got the funnel, right? Everyone who's heard of click funnels and those kind of yeah. things. People will run those things and they'll they'll look at your thing and then they'll open another tab and search you on Google and find your website and go look at your about page before they'll go back through your funnel. Right. And we're seeing that because we're tracking that kind of stuff with some of our clients where we're seeing, you know, we'll see an ad, someone come in from the ads, go through the webinar that's on an ad funnel and then pop out of that funnel, go through and click onto the website, visit the about page, read a few blog posts and then go back to the funnel. We're seeing that over and over and over again in all of in every industry we're working in. Um, and what's interesting about that is your about page. Most people ignore it. Right. And what they have on there is they have a little paragraph that's got like a, you know, it looks like uh, have you ever seen those Chinese manufacturer bios that are like this long? And, you know, it's got, yeah. you know, <laughs> they're just boring um, and they don't tell your story. And we mentioned this already that, you know, the consumer wants to do business with people. Right. Even if yeah. you're a big business, they want to know the story behind your business, the people that are behind it and what's actually happening. Um, so. What we do, um, and we do this with every site we work with, uh, every client we work with, is you want you want every aspect of your site to be driving into some sort of a call to action. Yeah. Right? And we talk about with podcasts, all of your podcast episodes should drive to a particular call to action. Your homepage should drive to a particular call to action. Your about page should serve that same call to action. Right. Um, I call it having a single point of failure. Right. You have a single point of like like. Everything is driving here, and then you can switch that out to see what's working better and what's not. Yeah. Uh, and so we we drive everything to that one call to action, and your about page should support that. And if if your website and your content marketing and your other marketing efforts aren't all driving towards some sort of, uh, you know, a, a top of funnel sort of thing, then you're missing out on a lot of business. Yeah. So, when it comes to utilizing your about page, we actually have a story framework that we use. Um, to teach business owners how to tell your story in a captivating way, right? Um, and I actually, I actually, I can give this. I can actually give your audience a template to this if you want. I can give you a link to it. It's a Google document we use, um, cool. and it's got every every single bit of the story templates in there. Um, and you start out essentially with like, here's where we are now, right? This is what we do, right? And um, so you can talk about like for Pushbot podcasts, we're an agency that does this, blah 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 blah. You already heard what I do for Pushbot podcasts, yeah. Um, and so that's the first part. You start like, here's what we're, we're at now. And if you want help with that, 
you know, click this link, right? So you have a call to action right above the fold in the first part of that story. That's like, here's where we are, here's what we do, here's who we help, and here's how you can get that help if you want it, right? Yeah. And and then you start into the actual story portion of it. And we, you know, from a from a storytelling standpoint, that's called starting with the end in mind. You may have heard that if you've ever listened to anything about yeah. how the if you've watched movies, you'll see them start in the middle of the action. We just watched the Sonic movie with my kids the other day, and they start right at the end of the chase scene where Dr. Robotnik is chasing Sonic. And he's like, You're probably wondering why I'm being chased through, you know, the uh uh yes. what, what is it, you know, chased through the the city by a, you know a crazy crazy man with a, a mustache, right? Um, that's starting with the end in mind. So that's what you're doing, right? You're starting with the end picture. This is where we are now. This is what we do. This is who we help. Um, and you have a couple of paragraphs or that just talk about what you do now and the kind of results you get for people. Um, and then you get into the where you started, right? So um, where you started, like first starting out, is is the you go back to the beginning. Here's where we were. Here's what we did. Here's some of the journeys that we went through. You get into some of your first successes, right? Just you know where we had some of these, uh, these, uh, uh, you know, these benefits and you know, uh, you know, these clients that we helped or these things, right? So you have the first success that you have there, um, and then generally you're going to have, and almost every story, if you think through your story, you're going to have these. You're going to have some sort of major roadblock or yes. a major problem. Yeah. Everything was great until it all blew up in our face, right? Um, yeah. And we've been able to do this with every single client. If you talk through their story, you always have this story. It's a, it's a traditional hero's journey type story. Yes. So it was all great until we had this problem. Um, and this problem led us to our, you know, to our new direction, right? So you talk through the problem. Here's what the things are. Here's what we learned from that. And here's how we ended up at this new, new direction. Right. Yeah. And here's what we're doing now and how we got here. And so you're actually walking people through that whole journey. And at the end, be like, now we're at this place, right? You're at the place back at the beginning. We're at this place where we are the best in the world at being a you know push button podcast agency for you, right? And yeah. that's how we got here. And if you want to have these benefits and you list them out for someone, then you want to make sure you actually go through and get this, right? So they're actually they get your whole story, right? Yes. They get to see your journey to how you got to where you are today. Um, and I can't even begin to tell you how many more leads you can generate in your business if you learn to tell your story well and use your story as a way to guide people to the top of your funnel yeah. right to the top of your sales your sales funnel um, and like i said I'll, I'll give your your audience that template cool. just free um so they can they can get in there and like literally every bit of it is i've got all the everything that i just went through with instructions on how to write each section is in there um so you have a structure to write a really compelling about page story I love it. So, uh, and thank you for doing that. I really appreciate that. So there's a couple of things I want to pull out of this that I mean, if people only take this away uh, from what we're talking about today, there is so much value here. It's crazy. Um, most people, what you're seeing and what a lot of other people are seeing is in the middle of their funnel, somebody's clicked on an ad, they're going through it and they're like, let me hit the brakes. I'm going to go over, I'm checking out their website. I'm going to their about page getting, this is kind of building that no like trust factor here, right? Mm -hmm. If your about page has the, the typical, Hey, meet our team. And you know, this is what we're doing. There's no clear call to action. There's nothing there. It's not compelling. It's not compelling. So, so they may have people actually dropping out of the middle of their funnel because their about page sucks. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. We can prove that with stats too. So yeah. the, just another thought too is if you could always up level that from the writing by adding a video at the top that just goes over the same story, right? Yeah, yeah, people love video. Video is obviously a great thing to utilize. So, um, when, and if you do it via video, it's helping them. It's just helping them get to know, like, and trust you even more because then they're seeing somebody talk. They're like, Oh yeah, there's a human behind this whole thing. So I, man, I love it. Um, so many people do not do that. I mean, well, I bet you we could pull up 10 about pages right now and I'd be shocked if any one of them is doing it. <laughs> I could give you several of ours. We're doing it on all of ours. Yeah. I, well, I'm, I'm sure you are. I would expect that. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, you got you got to practice what you preach, right? Absolutely. Um, so, so just just as an FYI, one of the things yeah. that we do with that content once it's done is we generally create we generally create two videos, right? We set, have have a, a video that says um, our story, 
and another video that says like from the owners, right? Where we have, have um, you know, just like a brief little interview with the owners and another one. And if you've ever on in website design, something you heard of called a fat footer, which is where you have like all your legal links and all the other yes. things. And we have, we have another part of our footer that is, it doesn't, it's not, doesn't actually visually look like the footer, but it's right above it. And it just has those two videos on there. It says from the owner and our story, right? It's got the two little videos on it and it'll be on every page of the site. And it's just the same content from the about page story that drives people into the, the content, right? And because okay. and so wherever they're at on the on the website, right? If they're on your products page or if they're, you know, where if anything outside of like a, a direct response marketing funnel, you know, all the regular pages on your website are going to have this on there. Um, those get played so much, right? Yeah. And it's building that no like trust stuff. And it's all the foundation of it is learning how to tell your story in a compelling way. Yeah, that's awesome. So this wouldn't be a, a complete conversation if we didn't get into podcasting. So let's talk about how podcasting can help folks build their business. So podcasting is, um, and I'm, I'm going to caveat this right from the beginning. When I say podcasting, I am referring to more than just the audio podcast that well, podcasting where it started as. Yes. Yes. Uh, and to include the multimedia podcast like this, right, where you have um, so so to include generally like a weekly show yeah. content, right? So whether that's video or audio or audio and video like this one um, could be individual, it could be interview guests again like this one. Um, so podcasting has sort of grown to include more than just the audio radio show that you know that existed on Apple's iTunes. Yeah. Um, so so with that sort of in mind, podcasting and is a huge aspect of your business or can be if you do it well um, for a couple of reasons, right? So one of them um, is it has the magical ability of adding leverage to your content in a way that pretty much nothing else you do can, can accomplish, right? So yeah. if you're doing content writing um, or if you're doing those little three minute YouTube videos that you see people doing all the time, or if you're doing, um, uh, what do you call it? The, the big long, you know, the, the, the it'll come to me. Um, cornerstone content that you hear people talk about for your, yes. your website, where you write those big long um, posts or yep. writing books. Like there's a lot of things that you can do for content, um, but all of them are hard and take a lot of effort. <laughs> yes. Podcasting, something like this, where you either invite a guest on or maybe you talk to the camera directly. Um, or for me, like this podcast episode here that we're doing, I'll have my team probably take this and chop up little bits of me talking and distribute it out as well, right? there, yep. the, the podcasting um is such a powerful medium for creating content because a lot of it's conversational, it's easy to do, and it requires minimal setup, right? So like yes. what, you're looking at this fancy studio I've got in here, that is a $30 sheet from Amazon, $100 light from Amazon, $100 microphone and a camera plug into my computer, right? In yeah. the back of an RV. Um, and, you know, just a little bit, little bit of a uh, YouTube knowledge on how to, how to set up a light and how to set up your microphone so it looks good. And my air conditioner is running right now. I'm using a little app called crisp.ai to pull the air conditioner sound out dynamically while you're right on the thing. So I don't have to worry about having a great soundscape. Yeah. Right? Um, and I think that cost me $4 a year for that software. Um, so like all in, we're talking a couple hundred bucks worth of equipment. Yeah. Um, and you can have a really nice studio, right? And that's that's for someone who's living in an RV and doing this. If you've got a nice office, you could, you know, of course, make it way better than what I've got going. Right. Um, but super easy to get into the creation of the business um, or creation of the content thing is for podcasting. It's got a really low barrier to entry, right? And yeah. you could get away with you could get away with the webcam on your computer. You could get away with the internal microphone. Of course, you up your production value by using a nicer camera or a nicer microphone. But you could just start with what you've already got on your phone or your computer. Um, yeah. So really low barrier to entry is one of the things I really like about it. And the second one is when you do long form content like this, where you're doing 15, 20, 30 minute interviews, or you're getting in front of the camera and talking about your expertise for those kind of things, that content is setting you up to be able to repurpose that content and get you in lots of different places at the same time without having to, um, without having to create content individually for every, every single like place there is. Otherwise, yes. you know, the, it's the Gary yeah. V model, right? The, it, the yeah, show totally. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He's got a staff of, I think the last time I checked, it was something like 60 people who, who repurposes his content. Right. Which is just insane. Yeah. Right? It you is don't insane. need to be quite that. You don't need to be quite that level. Uh, but the, the concept applies, right. Where you yeah. want to be creating content for all of that. Um, and podcasting, when you do it, especially if you start as a video, 
you can create audio content, you can create audiograms, you can create video content, you can cut them up into shorter little clips for your content. Yep. We have writers on our staff that actually pull them out and create show notes and blog um, blog content um, and then social media posts and quotable content, like all sorts of things that are specifically formatted for all the different social networks. So for one 20 to 30 minute piece of content, you get 30 or 40 pieces of content that go out. Um, yes. And again, like, you know, with push button podcasts, we actually build all those systems. So it's very, very um, automated on your part. Right. So all you have yeah. to do is create the content once and it goes out and all this stuff is created. Right. And I, I like the term um, leverage because uh, uh, because what it what it does le leverage is uh, is what machines give you right so I call it having a content machine yeah. and you know if you get in you get in behind your your BMW right the the wheel of that car you know you, the effort you have to put in is you you know you push your foot up and down a little bit and you steer your hands a little bit right yeah. and you can go zero to sixty in a couple of seconds and drive all over the country right that is you get a massive amount of output from a little bit of input. Yeah. Um, and that's what a machine gets you. So when you build a, a comp, a proper content machine, podcasting is that input that you can get a lot of output from, right? Yeah. Uh, and so my my little phrase that I have for for podcasting is that uh, is from the Mash TV show. I don't know if you remember watching that. My uh, my wife's in love with it. Um, <laughs> but uh, what's what's his name? Uh, Winston? I can't remember. Anyways, one of the uh, the doctors in the show because my wife watches it all the time um, is. Uh, he says someone asks him it's like how did you how do you get such good outcomes in your surgery and he's like he says i do one thing i do it very well and then i move on right and so our analogous for that for for podcasting is you do one thing your podcast you do it very well right so set up your good stuff have good content structures for it um and then instead of moving on we say then add leverage yeah. right where <laughs> you come in and you actually start taking that content and distributing it and um, repurposing it all over the place um so you can show up everywhere Right. And so there's a couple of things that are going to be really key for that. One of them is making sure your production, your production value is pretty good, making sure your content is actually valuable. Um, yeah. And the other one is making sure you, you're driving to a call to action. Right. We mentioned that in the about page stuff that you have some sort of a call to action that's driving to um, to your sales funnel. Well, otherwise, if you're creating all this content, you're not driving someone into your funnel, then you're just wasting your time. Yeah. Uh, Right. And I know you and I have already shared stories about people who have humongous podcasts or humongous audiences and they're never making some sort of an offer or call to action. If you're doing that, you're just wasting your time with the content. But if you're driving people into your sales funnel, uh, you can create a tremendous amount of momentum in your business using a podcast. Yeah. I, this is really, really key. Um because I've been on a number of podcasts where they're not they're not doing video. They're just recording the audio. And if you really want to get leverage and squeeze every bit of productivity out of the content that you're producing with your podcast, I think video, and I know you agree because you guys do this, is so, so important. Um, because the video is at the top and then you can just pull all kinds of other content yeah. from, from that. Um, but it's just like you said, th this is the Gary V model of, of content. And uh, he's obviously proven it works. There are tons of other people that have proven it works. Even if you're doing a, a 15 minute podcast interview via video, there's so much content that you can pull from that and just keep putting it out there. Keep putting it out yeah, there. You keep, doing it. you keep doing it, right? And I don't, I don't remember if I mentioned this on the interview or not, but podcasting gives you the three A's, right? The three A's you need to grow your business, which is yes. awareness attention authority yeah right you need your audience needs to be aware that you exist your content needs to capture their attention right video does a better job capturing the attention than almost anything else right yes. now um and then your the content that you actually provide after you've captured their attention should be helping them solve problems yeah right helping them solve problems that's where the authority comes in right and so what i always tell people is your content should help people solve problems for them and when they solve those problems you get the opportunity to introduce a higher level problem, yeah. right? And that's where your products and services come in, right? So we've talked all this time about podcasting and you're thinking to yourself, oh, now I know what I need to do for a content marketing thing. And the higher level problem is now that you're doing it, right? It's a lot of work. It's a lot of effort, right? Yes. So as a, just by way of example, push button podcasts service that we offer is the higher level problems solution, right? Now that yep. you're doing the podcast, and you're going out and creating that stuff. The higher level problem is that takes a lot of time and effort, right? If for every hour of content you produce, it's probably eight to 10 hours of work. If you and two or three staff members or one staff member who has a gigantic breadth of skills, yes. um, 
so they cost a lot of money um, or whatever, right? So all of those things that go into doing it in-house, um, you know, that's actually where Pushback Podcast came from for us as I was running the Hero Show and I got like three episodes in after, out, out of eight episodes recorded and I was like, I'm going to starve to death and die because... <laughs> I'm not having enough time to uh, to do the stuff that produces revenue in my business if yeah. I'm focusing on this podcast. And I knew it was going to be a long term game. So it sat on the shelf for like three years with eight episodes recorded because I didn't have the time to go into it, which is where Push Button Podcast was born. And so that's a higher level problem is we're doing the content and we're creating it on a regular basis, but we're not doing all the stuff that's actually going to make it effective building the content machine. Right. And if you don't build the content machine, then you might as well not do the podcast. Right. <laughs> so yeah. so that's the higher level problem. That's where, you know, I can come in and introduce the the uh, the higher level solution, which is we have a, a service that does that full service for you. So you can just record the content, be done, and we'll build the whole machine for you. Yeah. Right. And so that's just sort of a live example of how that works. Right. So if you're doing your content, um, you're helping people solve a problem. Right. So we talked about several problems today, how you price your services. Yep. how to tell a compelling story and how you should be creating, create, creating podcasts. So those are me helping your audience solve problems in their business, yep. right? And then the the call to action is what's the higher level problem? And you have to learn how to, how to do that in your business to look at what problems can I help people solve and how do those lead people into being the right type of customer for the higher level problems you can solve? Yeah, I love it. The other thing, and we should probably... Um... I think this is another important aspect of podcasting. Uh, you and I talked about this, um, that a lot of people don't think about initially is the relationships that you build by having a podcast or frankly, even doing guest spots like you're doing today. Yeah, The relationship building aspect of it can be huge if you keep that in mind and use it as part of your strategy. Yeah. So um, one of the things, so my podcast, The Hero Show, um, is most most podcasts are in the business of creating an audience. Um, and my, my podcast, particularly because the higher level problem that I'm introducing is the uh, push button podcast service, is the guests that I'm bringing on, right? My audience is my guests, which is unique. But it gives me also a unique perspective on what that networking stuff looks like, because I have to be very intentional about how I'm building those relationships so yeah. when we get onto the podcast and you saw me do this um before we had the show and after the show is talk a little bit about your business and what problems you're solving and those kind of things and talk about your show and can we get on your show and those kind of things yeah. um because that's that's the part of the business that's important to me now a lot of podcasts exist because they're going b2c or b2b and they're trying to get the audience and they forget the networking aspect that comes along with interviewing guests or bringing people on because right. um, it's a it's a secondary instead of a primary um, you know, reason for their podcast to exist, yeah. but it's such a powerful secondary um, where, you know, like right now, my entire podcast business, Push Button Podcast Agency is being built on the back of that secondary purpose for most podcasts, yeah. which is super cool. Um, and the, the reason that's so powerful is because you and I can get on and we've, at this point, we've had two really in-depth conversations, yes. right? One on my podcast, now one on yours, um, where, you know, you, I got to hear a lot of your story on my podcast, and then you get to hear a lot of mine on yours, yes. which is really cool. And what I tell people all the time is relationships, human beings are a story born people, right? And relationships are judged, the depth of a relationship is judged based on how much of someone else's story you know. Right? Yeah. So one of the things I tell my kids, um, and this is always fun, is, uh, is that an acquaintance is someone whose name you know, but you, their story you don't. Yeah. Right? A friend is someone who you know their name and you know some of their story. And a best friend is someone who you know their name and you know so much of their story that they couldn't even tell you anything new if they wanted to, right? The only yeah. way that you're going to deepen your relationship is if you go out and create new stories together, right? And yeah. so that's how we judge relationships. We judge relationships based on how much of the other person's story we know, yeah. right? And so with that in mind, like that goes back into everything we've talked about today, right? The reason why you're telling your story in your about page is because your customers want to know your story. That's how they're going to judge your relationship with you yeah. is based on how much of your, your story they know. And if you take the time in your podcast um, or your, you know, your multimedia show, right, to get to know the other person, right, and then take the time to let them get to know you, then you have that relationship that can turn into business or turn into referrals, um, and Absolutely. I know you've already been talking to me about, I know some agencies who might be willing to outsource to you if you're willing to white label, like those, those are the kind of things that come out of these types of relationships. Yeah. Um, and it can be a huge aspect of your business. And I know personally in everything that I've run for the last 10 years, networking has been 
one of the biggest aspects of growing my business. Yeah. And of all of the things I've done that enabled networking, podcast has been the easiest thing I've ever done because everyone says yes to it. Right. I can come up to almost anyone in 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 the industries I want to be in and be like, hey, I've got a podcast. I'd like to interview. Would you like to come tell your story? Yeah. Right. And it works especially well for my podcast because of the the framing that we have and some other fun yes. things. Um, and there's there's been a few people that have been outside of reach. And it's just because of, you know, we were a young show and they were like, hey, and they realize how powerful it can be to have someone like them come on your show. They're like, come back to me after you've had, you know, a couple hundred episodes or a couple right. hundred, you know, things. And, and then I'll come on your show. Right. So uh, there's a couple people who might be out of reach. But for the most part, most people are like, yeah, I'd love to come and tell my story on your show. Right. And then you get a chance to meet with those people and build those relationships. Yeah. Um, so it's a great way to add value to people that you want to further that relationship with. You know, I've had multiple people that I have interviewed that I had already had conversations with before I had met them. And when we when we were done, I said to them, I have such a better understanding of what you do now. After the first conversation we had, I had a general idea, but not really. I now, after we have talked and you've shared what you do, how you do it, I have so much better understanding of what you do. Um, this was valuable for me. And I was the one that was just interviewing you, you know? Yeah, yeah. And um, what's, what's cool about that is even if we never do business together, now you know how to refer me to someone. Absolutely. Right? Right. You know, you know who who the right people are for me and you know sort of what we do and how we do it and who the right people are for us. Right. And that's the kind of stuff that comes out of it. So like for me, I'm building a huge referral network for my business and you can do the same thing when you run a podcast. Right. And I always tell people you want to sort of play both both sides of that. Right. If you have a podcast, also go and do podcasting. Right. Get on yes. other people, be a guest. Yeah. Um, and, you know, same kind of thing. Make sure you have a call to action, have something you can tell people about. Right. Have have topics that you can talk about that drive people back into your business. You saw me do that today with the yep. push button podcast stuff um, where we got to add and talk about value. And, it, you know, if you're interested in that, you'll go check out pushbuttonpodcast.com and you'll you'll yep. learn about what we do. If it if it makes sense, if it doesn't, that's cool. Yeah. So that Richard, you have you have uh, you've showered us with your wisdom. Um, tons of value in this uh, episode. So thank you for doing that. I have put up Push Button Podcast's uh, website up here, pushbuttonpodcast.com. Is there anything else you want to share us before we, share with us before we uh, end end this conversation today? One thing, um, and this comes from my uh, my my travel, right? So one of the things that I get asked all the time, um, or not asked, I get told, is you know because we travel, we live full time on the road, and we run our business. I probably four x my business since we started traveling. It's been really fun. Um, and I get told all the time, I wish we could do what you do. And the problem I see with that and the, that I've come over the last several years is, you know, early when I started this, I was used to respond with, well, why don't you just go do it? Right. And the reality is, is most people, they look at someone else who's doing something they want to do and they say, I want to do that. But in their head, they don't, they don't like, or sorry, in their heart, they don't really want to, right. right? They just want to live vicariously through someone else. And so my encouragement to people is, is whether that's starting a business or starting a new marketing program or figuring out how to travel, um, you know, full-time like we do, whatever the thing is that you want, make sure you really want it. And then if you do really want it, do everything it takes to make it happen, right? So, yeah. because there's nothing that's gonna stop you um, if you really want it to, to happen. But if you're, if you're comfortable where you are and with what you're doing now, admit that to yourself and learn how to be content there, Yeah. right? Um, and I think that's where a lot of people struggle is they think, oh, I want this other thing. I want to live vicariously through them. Or, you know, that's where we have people watching Netflix and YouTube videos all the time because they want to be doing something else. Yeah. Um, but they just want it up here. It just tickles, it tickles some dopamine receptor in there that might be cool without admitting that, like, you know, I don't really want that. Yes. Um, and at least people to be dissatisfied with their lives and where they are. And what I'm telling you is if you want it, do it. And if you don't want it, be honest with yourself and learn to be content with what you've got. Yeah. Um, or where you want to go or figure out what you really want to do. Um, so anyways, that's sort of my, my non-business yeah. <laughs> learn. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Richard. I really do appreciate it. Um, I learned some, I learned a bunch today. So, um, I know other people will as well. Um, for those of you that are tuning in, watching, listening, thank you for doing so. I'm Tim Fitzpatrick with Rialto Marketing. 
If you want to gain clarity on where to focus your marketing efforts right now to get the best return, pop on over to our website. Uh, by the way, this is the call to action part of it. Um, R-I-A-L-T-O marketing.com. Just click on the get a free consult button. Guarantee you will get a ton of value from the call and walk away with some clarity on where you need to focus right now. Till next time, take care.